Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys my digitally digested segment for the Sony NEX6. So of course, this is the latest addition to the NEX family of mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras from Sony, and really the flagship right now, even though the NEX7 still sits at the top of the pyramid in terms of pricing, and megapixel count, many do feel right now that the camera we're looking at here is the best available from Sony right now and arguably one of the best cameras on the market, period, the end. And I can understand why. After spending a considerable amount of time with it, it is a pleasure to use, much like most of the uh, NEX cameras, at least the 5N on, because that's where uh, image quality and video performance really went to a whole nother level. And now that the E-mount lineup of lenses is really beginning to mature, and older lenses are becoming more uh, value oriented, it really opens up a whole new market uh, for NEX users. And the 6 represents the best of pretty much everything Sony has to offer thus far in terms of uh, their technology as well as listening to customer feedback, at least in my opinion. And that's why it comes in in between the 5R and the NEX 7. So let's talk about pricing. This is a $1,000 kit. It does include the brand new Pancake Kit Zoom Lens, which is very close in uh, focal range to the original 18 to 55 millimeter lens that you'll find with pretty much any X kit on the market, including the NEX7. So this is the first camera to get the benefit of this very compact 16 to 50 millimeter uh, lens, which is uh, wider but a little bit shorter than the much larger original kit lens. A little bit more distortion on the wide angle, I'll tell you guys that right now, but that's to be expected. Uh, overall wide angle performance with the entire NEX lineup of cameras often does have a little bit of distortion on the edges. Uh, the 16 millimeter prime, which is a much older lens, not really designed to leverage even this camera, let alone the uh, megapixel count on the NEX7. Certainly a prime example of a lens that just isn't up to snuff in many people's opinion, although plenty are certainly satisfied with its performance at its price point. And I think the same rule kind of applies to this 16 to 50 millimeter lens. You have to respect the fact that it does make this camera pocketable, which is extraordinarily impressive in my opinion, considering what it can do both in video and still imaging capability, which I'll get to through the course of this review. And uh, to boot, it really does perform relatively well once you get beyond that wide angle all the way out to 50 really smooth it does have a power toggle for the power zoom if I can bring it into focus for you guys and some people will dislike it uh, simply because they're used to using a manual zoom especially with the NEX lineup and I completely understand where they're coming from but I think for entry-level users and overall people who want to shoot more video which this camera does do the best quite frankly not necessarily in terms of quality but in, with regard to overheating in the NEX lineup that's where this little power zoom uh, really will be a handy feature because even though I'm accustomed to manual uh, zooming and a lot of people are out there it's certainly nice to have the option. I think options are always good, and the fact that Sony's given us the ability to go either way is certainly beneficial. Uh, in terms of feature sets, you are working with the exact same 16.1 megapixel APS-C sensor that you'll find in the 5R, and the 5R is considerably less. You're looking at a $750 suggested retail price point, and that's not even with this uh, pancake kit zoom. It's more expensive with this uh, pancake lens. That's with the older one. So uh, I have to say if you're on the fence between the 5R and the 6, I'm definitely going to recommend the 6 simply because the 6 incorporates so many more uh, semi-pro amateur features that the 5R is missing. But in the same vein, if we're talking about just pure image quality and video quality, then they are extraordinarily close, if not the same. So I want you guys to know that. But in terms of benefits, so manual controls, we've got a traditional dial like you'll find on many Sony cameras, and I think they're pleasing to have. I actually enjoy having this on the camera a lot, whether you're an entry-level user just breaking into using digital SLRs or uh, NEX mirrorless cameras like this one. I think this is a great thing to have, something that I would have liked to have seen on other NEX models, so I like that Sony's added it. And then you do now also have the function button, uh, another manual uh, customizable button that you'll be able to assign to pretty much anything you want. And then unlike the 5R, you're getting another dial. Now here, traditionally on the 5R, unlike the 5N, we were given one of the NEX7's tri-nav metal buttons, which is really nice. I like it, the tri-nav system is really nice. But for many of you out there who are considering this camera versus the NEX7, 
the tri-nav is purely a matter of personal preference. And I'm pointing that out because you may be very much satisfied with what this has to offer. So this is another completely customizable uh, dial that you can pretty much assign to whatever you want. Now in terms of button configuration, very different from the 5R, and that's another reason I don't like to really compare this camera to the 5R because it's fundamentally different in every way. The layout, the ergonomics, the controls, the viewfinder, no touch screen, those all point towards someone who's more of an advanced user that really does not want the gimmick of maybe even Wi-Fi, even though that's on board, or the power zoom, even though that's another feature. And that's where this is really trying to, I think, get both users, not just one. The NEX7 is that niche camera for the high-end user. This wants to be somewhere in between, and I can personally understand it, because if I could start over, uh, this camera would be very, very attractive because the 16.1 megapixel sensor does a really good job. Uh, it doesn't have the same amount of, you know, sp actual literal detail as the sensor in the NEX7, but unless you're cropping or doing gigantic prints like 13 by 19 and up, you really aren't going to miss that extra detail in most cases. You know, the picture within the picture will still be here on this 16.1 megapixel sensor. Also, you can argue less noise on this lower megapixel count since it's the same sensor size uh, in both this camera and the 5R than you're going to get out of the 7. But I don't want to get into that. Let's stick to the buttons. So, layout's very similar to the 7, even the grip very similar but some improvements. Hopefully one of the issues as I mentioned early on was grip separation was a common issue with the 7. I don't think it's going to happen with this model simply because as I mentioned before this product really is a result not only of Sony's upgrading uh, or advancements in technology but also listening to consumer feedback and actual problems, warranty claims. So that's another thing they've addressed. The movie record button, something that now in the NEX7 you can disable for obvious reasons because of the mispress issue because it was actually over here right under where you'd place your thumb on the NEX7. I mentioned in my update of this camera I had mixed feelings about it and that still stands because even though now I will not, you know, accidentally press it, it's a lot more difficult to intentionally press it. And as a result, because it's on the side of the body, I tend to actually end up shaking the camera uh, you know, at uh, specifically when I'm finishing a recording. Now, for many of you out there, this will be a non-issue. I'm just speaking from a personal experience with the uh, 6 after shooting with it for a while. But overall, really like the actual grip feel. It has everything the 7 has, but with just more features to boot. The only thing you're really giving up obviously the megapixel count and the metallic build. Uh, let's talk about build for a second because I've already given you guys a good amount of information at least on the sensor. I do want to of course remind you 10 mega, uh, not excuse me, not 10 megapixels, but uh, 10 frames per second on this camera just like on the 5R. So again, same performance, very fast on continuous auto shooting, 12 if you're in JPEG and not RAW. So really impressive in terms of speed for its form factor and the hybrid autofocus does make this camera faster. Uh, now in the 5R, which you do also have the, the hybrid autofocus as well as this camera, the first two NEX cameras to sport uh, the, the hybrid system, I have seen a performance increase, but it's marginal. And I've kind of told you this uh, for those of you who followed my coverage of these cameras, that sort of has been the theme here. Unfortunately, not a tremendous gain, even with a lens like this, a brand new lens that you would imagine is designed to take advantage and leverage that brand new hybrid autofocus system. However, I still believe that the new E-mount e lenses that are launching right now, uh, the primes, the wide angle, uh, I believe that all of those lenses, probably even the 24 millimeter Zeiss, which I do not have to test with this, will really benefit from the hybrid autofocus. But the new lenses definitely. The Zeiss might be pushing it because after all it was manufactured before this new system uh, came out. And yes, there are firmware updates, but at least in my experience, I have not seen a real improvement when using my SEL 18 to 200 millimeter lens. Granted, that is one of the older lens for the NEX system, but it is also one of the best zoom lenses, and in my opinion, one of the best pieces of glass that you can have as an everyday 
uh, walk around lens for this camera or the NAX7 or the 5R or the 5N. Granted, it does turn it into a bit of a weight since it's like attaching a brick to such a small lightweight body. The complete opposite of what we're looking at here with the pancake uh, zoom, which really does turn this into a featherweight because here's the old 16 millimeter prime and you can see just about the same thickness. So really impressive because this was the only way you could ever really get an NEX in your pocket, but now the 6 can go in your pocket right out of the box as long as you uh, pony up the extra money for this. By the way, you can purchase the 6 with the older 18 to 55, so don't think you have to go up to that $1,000 price point. You can, you know, pay less and proportionally get less in terms of what Sony is offering you because I do recommend going with this new pancake if you're trying to decide. I think the benefits outweigh uh, all of the cons associated with the mild image distortion at the widest angle. Uh, overall, definitely a better package. I like that you now have a power zoom, if even if you never intend to use it. Now, uh, back to overall build. Uh, the electronic viewfinder pretty much exactly the same as the NEX7, so that is a win-win as much as it could ever possibly be. As I just showed you guys with manual controls, you're gaining quite a bit. The same exact flash that you have on the NEX7, which is a very good flash for a built-in flash. Uh, because it is directional, so you can control your lighting, and that's going to obviously directly affect your exposures. Uh, another big improvement that the NEX7, which is the higher-end camera in this lineup, does not have, is a traditional non-proprietary hot shoe. So you can actually attach just about anything to this camera right here. And that is a very, very big benefit that the 6 has over the 7, especially for uh, semi-pros, amateurs, and professionals that want to use this as a backup camera, B-roll, whatever you plan to do with it, it's going to give you a lot more uh, flexibility, especially pricing flexibility, than the proprietary uh, mount found on other NEX models. Uh, so that's definitely a good thing. Overall, really, even though this is not the same metallic build as the 7, it is so close in terms of the feel. Uh, I have to stress that you guys should go into a store, whether it's a Sony store, since it's probably the only place you'll find them all together. But uh, go in if you can. Uh, or, obviously, another good option, some of the great camera stores like we have here in New York. Uh, those, unfortunately, don't exist all over the country. But uh, I think Micro Center is probably another place. Fry's. Uh, I don't know if H.H. Gregg. I'm trying to go through everything that exists for just about all of you here in the U.S., uh, so those are some good options besides uh, Best Buy, but Best Buy is not going to carry all of these models in store. They're probably internet only, if anything, uh, when it comes to the 7 and the 6. Not sure if the 6 is in store. But, you know, really uh, the 5R would be the only model that you're going to see in store. So uh, that's why I mentioned those other retailers. But feel it in hand. See how you think it's going to perform. Because after all, if you're at this price point, you probably are looking to replace a digital SLR or at the very least back it up. And that's what, in my opinion, this camera does very, very well. The 7, obviously, looks more to replace it. That's where the megapixel race comes into play. Because when you're dealing with, you know, over $1,000 bodies in any arena right now, you usually don't have 16.1 megapixels. That's not to say that they don't exist, because they do. But just in terms of the latest and greatest from uh, all of the big manufacturers, which are really only, in my opinion, the big three at this point, since Sony has consolidated so many camera properties now between Konica and Ulta and now Olympus as well. So Sony really becoming the boss in my opinion right now and the 6 represents that. It takes everything that was great about the 7, everything that was great about the 5N and creates this love child that I think very few of you are going to be disappointed with. I would have liked to have seen a touch screen, I will say that. I also would have liked to have seen a greater uh, expanded range of use with the LCD, but it is greater than what we have with the NEX7. So from that perspective, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying when I look at that 5R that's less money and has more range of motion, I do miss it. But the limitation is created by the electronic viewfinder. This screen can't come up and flip over because otherwise it would be hitting. That's another reason we don't have a touch screen here. If we did have a touch screen, uh, anytime we'd go to use the electronic viewfinder, our face would be activating things on screen. Uh, the same is, you know, the reason why why the NEX7 never had a touch screen. Now, I want to touch on overheating. Uh, in terms of overheating, this is where this camera is a champion. Yes, it doesn't have uh, the advanced uh, video uh, lean, I'll say, that the 7 has because the 7 does have a line in for audio, something that anyone who needs uh, a real true video dedicated 
you know, photographic tool, you need line in. Well, this camera doesn't have it, but the overheating issue that the 7 has is pretty much vacant from this. Now, the 7's a larger physical body than this. Uh, of course, larger than the 5N or the 5R, and that is part of the reason that both this camera and the 7 are, will fare better than the 5N or 5R. But whatever Sony has done now here in the 6, a tremendous improvement because I always tell you guys, keep the LCD away from the body in order to keep things cool. Another tip is to use the viewfinder. Uh, but the base, the at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is when does the camera overheat? And in my tests right now, this is the only camera that can literally go through an entire single battery of video uh, until it hits the wall and shuts itself down. Uh, you might see warnings by your second 30 minute clip, but really until that third 30 minute clip, which is when the battery is going to deplete, that's when this camera shuts down. So we're looking at a breakthrough when it comes to overheating, at least as far as the 6 goes. And I think for a lot of you, that's a game breaker. That'll be one of the reasons you will want this camera over the 5R, the NEX7, or any other camera from any other manufacturer, because we already know how great it does in low light for imaging, uh, as well as pretty much any other still you want to take with it. And in terms of video capability, Sony's NEX lineup, at least when it comes to the 5N and up, are totally unmatched. The 5R, the 6 and the 7 are the only cameras that have the broad array of different video formats in AVC HD that they do. So uh, that is a critical thing now that this camera doesn't overheat. Because like I said, even though the more expensive 7 has the higher megapixel sensor, same size but higher megapixel, and is certainly uh, geared towards the semi-pro and amateur with that metal build audio line in, at the end of the day, the line in really doesn't do you a lot of good if the camera overheats after 45 minutes of video. This one is going to outlast it. Granted, it's not a huge difference. It is a considerable one that I think a lot of you should be aware of. So overheating is not uh, completely gone from this camera, much like the 5R is an improvement from the 5N, but this is a much bigger improvement than the 5R, so I want you guys to know that. So I've talked about just about everything that you guys need to know about this camera. Battery life pretty much in line with all of the NEX uh, cameras out there, three to 400 stills on uh, video. If you're just doing video, like I just said, you could get about 90 minutes, which is pretty good before the camera overheats and the battery expires. Uh, mixed usage is going to vary. Also, still images will vary. That's why I say three to 400. It depends on what uh, photo schemes, shooting modes you're actually using. So with that said, let me go through some of the actual uh, modes. Let me turn on the camera since we, you guys haven't actually seen anything here yet from the menu system. But as you guys know, when I give you the full review, I'm giving you everything you need to know about purchasing, purchasing uh, the respective camera or device I'm reviewing and whether or not it really will fit your needs and your price point. So let me go ahead and take us directly into the menu. Remember, no touch screen here. That grid is the hybrid autofocus system. And uh, basically, of course, you can control what you display on screen, like any of the NEX cameras. And for whether you want the most simple layout or most, most complex, the 6 is going to afford it much like the 7. But let's go into the menu. As you can see, very similar to what we have with all the other NEX cameras, but there is a little bit less menu diving than what you'll find with the NEX 7, which is something that I like. Let's start off with setup. I'm just going to show you guys what's here so you can see it. And uh, this way you'll know, uh, as I mentioned in all of my reviews when companies are wise enough to actually uh, give you some hand holding. Sony does it here. Every single option you can go on, it's going to give you a description of what that option actually does within the camera setup. So I'm just taking you guys through it. And uh, no memory card in there right now. Cleaning mode, of course, to clean the sensor. I do recommend picking up a cleaning kit for any NEX camera, of course, or any digital SLR. Uh, because it's simply a necessary evil. All of these cameras, interchangeable lenses, dust will eventually get on your sensor and you will need to clean it. No question about it. But you can see quite a few different uh, features here in the setup, uh, giving you just about everything you need to do uh, with the camera out of the box. And uh, by the way, both the 6 and the 5 are much like the 5N and the 7, work exceptionally well out of the box. But you're going to want to customize things, of course, to your own likings. So let me go ahead and show you guys some of the actual uh, quality modes here, uh, rather than just uh, the gimmicks and other features. Uh, and another thing I want to point out before I do that 
is that you do also have uh, much like on the NEX 7, uh, focus peaking, a great, great feature for manual lenses because with the NEX lineup of cameras, you can attach an adapter and pretty much throw on any piece of glass uh, in history to these cameras. That's another reason they're a favorite among just about every photographer out there because no matter what glass you have sitting in your closet or that you actively use, you can use it with this camera. And with the focus peaking, it's really, really easy. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. That's one of the beautiful attributes of the NEX lineup. So let me show you guys uh, some image size features here. As you can see, as I mentioned before, if we just look at video recording formats, there's that really broad array that I mentioned before that no other manufacturer matches. And that's a very strong selling point if you're looking for a camera that really brings you the best of both worlds. Uh, I like both the uh, 24p FX as well as the um, 60, excuse me, the 60p uh, PS. Those are the two modes I shoot most frequently in, but uh, that's going to depend as you see whether or not you need a progressive uh, recording uh, with a higher frame rate or lower. Uh, really, one's a cinematic effect, one is better for sports high speed visuals, but I don't want to get into that right now. Let me go ahead and jump back and in terms of file formats, you've got what we've always had with NEX cameras, AVC HD, the high definition standard, or MP4, which is better for computer use, easier to edit, easier to upload, much smaller file size, uh, but that also changes your resolution capabilities. Uh, you're not going to have that wide range of resolutions if you go into MP4. So keep that in mind. I do always shoot in AVC HD because my theory is capture it in the highest quality. You can always downsize it later. Uh, in terms of still imaging, this is a 16.1 megapixel sensor as I mentioned before. So that's your highest quality setting. You can drop it down to 8.4 or 4 megapixels. Uh, I'm not sure why you would, but the options there. And then of course aspect ratio, you can play with that if you like to experiment with 16 by 9 photos. Certainly nice sometimes for doing something a little bit different with you know widescreen uh, prints. Now in terms of raw capabilities, they're all there. Uh, if you do continuous shooting in JPEG, you can get 12 frames per second. In the raw JPEG mode, you're going to get 10 in a burst. That is dependent on having a high enough speed SD card. So I do recommend at least a class 10 as usual, as many of you know if you follow my channel. So that pretty much covers the quality. And then in terms of the balance, well, there's nothing really else to show you guys here. Uh, in terms of the actual camera, you've got your drive mode which of course gives you just about everything that you could possibly need in terms of uh, metering the number of shots taken, whether it's uh, triggered or, uh, or excuse me, whether it's uh, remotely triggered or you're actually pressing on the shutter. Uh, but this is all standard fare stuff. Let's get back to the menu. Flash mode. This is a pop-up flash, by the way. Uh, just something that you should be aware of. Uh, autofocus. You can select whether you want it to be automatic, manual. Again, nothing really new there. Your autofocus area, your mode, tracking, which by the way, I want to point out in relation to the hybrid autofocus, that's where uh, it will excel. And that's where I expect to see it get even better with new zoom lenses that come out. Uh, because that's where the hybrid autofocus really comes into play, at least in my experience. It doesn't really show up in traditional shots. Uh, you're not going to see it necessarily in portraits. It's going to seem like the same speed as what you would get out of the 5N or the NEX7. But when it comes to sports photography, uh, fast moving objects, uh, people running, cars driving by, that's where I've seen the hybrid autofocus shine. And with better glass, you're only going to get a better experience. Uh, in terms of face detection, that standard fare, smile, shutter is a gimmick we could all live without, but I'm sure there are plenty of you out there that still use it. Uh, the LCD display, the viewfinder, you know, uh, drive mode, as I already said, we're back to the top of the menu. Let's jump back. Playback, this is a mixed bag for me. I, I don't know why Sony doesn't combine uh, still and video on playback. They don't. I'm not going to get into it. It's probably my least favorite aspect of the NEX lineup, but also one of the least important because 
What really matters to me at the end of the day is the quality of the device in terms of the image and vo uh, video quality and the fact that you do have Wi-Fi on board and the ability to transfer all of your images and video without ever having to remove the SD card. Boy, this is, you know, king of lazy in terms of uh, the ability to get your images, uh, images uh, seamlessly to whatever device, tablet, phone, or a uh, computer without having to do basically anything other than tell the camera to send them there. Once, of course, you've actually set it up with your home network using their, uh, you know, Sony's proprietary software, which some of you won't like, but if you do want to utilize uh, the Wi-Fi elements of the camera, you're going to have to uh, set it up not only with your home network, but create an account with Sony. And then once you've done that, you'll have access to their marketplace as well. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, the marketplace I don't have set up on here because I've only been using that on the 5R. After all, it's the exact same experience, nothing different there. And really what it comes down to is that right now there are about, I think, four or it's either four or six applications in total that are available. And I'll throw a link into the description of this video to show you guys a demonstration of one of the, at least the only real important app that I like right now that's free from Sony's own uh, marketplace for the camera, which of course you need Wi-Fi to connect to and have to go through that setup that I just mentioned. And that is for a remote shutter uh, as well as viewfinder that you can use from a Android or iOS device so that you're able to actually take a picture of uh, whatever your camera is seeing and actually have a preview. And no, so no more guessing or, or trying to line it up that remote shot and not being sure that you're getting what you want. Now you can absolutely know exactly what you're getting and take the picture at the right time rather than relying on a timer. So that's a really cool function that makes all of these new Wi-Fi enabled NEX cameras a little bit more cutting edge, but yes, it is a gimmick that I'm sure many of you won't care about, but of course won't reject if it's thrown into the package in your brand new NEX camera. So that's something, one of the applications I like. Other ones uh, include um, noise reduction, which they charge $5 for, which will combine, I believe, six images and just give you overall noise reduction. You've also got, uh, I'm trying to think of what other, uh, what other ones, they also have a, a filter application, also a um, uh, image manipulation app that'll allow you to crop and do other things. So they're really looking to change the way that you use uh, your camera, especially a high-end camera like these NEX mirrorless interchangeable lens ones. So I really do like that concept. It's smart. It's the evolution of an already very much evolved imaging solution in my opinion because just look at the size of this and you've got 16 to 50 millimeters of fantastic video and still capability. So uh, I really like everything that this camera represents. Uh, this, as well as the 5R, are welcomed. In fact, in my opinion, uh, fantastic additions to the NEX lineup. I think that overall, whether you go with this, the 5R, the 5N, or the 7, you're going to be really pleased because all of them perform extraordinarily well in different ways. And the fact that Sony's made so many different models to, uh, you know, basically give us as consumers so many different options is a great thing considering all of these cameras perform exceptionally well. Uh, clearly, this camera, the NEX6, is aimed at the person who feels the 5R comes up short in terms of manual controls. They want that electronic viewfinder, don't really care about a touch screen. The Wi-Fi probably doesn't make a difference either, but the Pancake Zoom really just puts it over the edge in terms of giving them everything they want. And I think for a lot of you out there, the extra megapixels of the NEX7 are a negligible factor since, the, again, that really just equates to better ability to crop your images and do extraordinarily large prints without losing resolution. Uh, also, you will get, as I mentioned earlier in this video, less image noise with a lower megapixel count uh, on a sensor like this than you will with the NEX7. The same applies to the 5R. So overall, really like this camera. Menu is slightly more intu uh, intuitive than what you'll find with the 7, but still very similar, but a little less menu diving. The mode dial certainly lends to that as well. Uh, I'm not going to really take you guys through all the modes because they're pretty much everything that we found on all previous generations of NEX cameras, so there's nothing new to report that. 
everything's still the same there. You can see uh, no real lag at all as I switch through modes. And it's very stiff, this button, which is part of giving it that professional feel that the 6 is trying to achieve, much like the NEX 7. And I do appreciate that because this is a less expensive camera. And that's where I say if I had to do things over again, the 6 would definitely be at the top of my list because I think for a lot of people, the 7 was a very expensive jump up from the 5N. And that's why Sony recognized there was really a very clear place in the market scheme, uh, in the structure, uh, for this camera at the $1,000 point. Uh, and obviously less if you don't care about the pancake zoom. By the way, just to give you an idea of how quickly it does zoom, I'm going to just use the manual here. And you can see that's going... We're going, uh, you know, wide and back both ways. So it's a matter of seconds on the power, and it is smooth. I know I'm not showing you guys on screen because the lens cap is on, but that'll give you an idea. And just to reiterate, the quality of this OLED viewfinder, exactly the same as the 7. So really very, very good. Yes, it does have some flaws, uh, some contrast issues. It is not perfect. No piece of electronics is. But overall, the NEX6 is really a fantastic camera, and I think that anyone who picks it up right now will be very, very pleased with it. Uh, th those of you out there who are trying to figure out if you should pick this up over the NEX7, which is still out there at the top of the market, I would say if you can wait, wait, because the replacement for the 7 will probably be in the marketplace sometime uh, towards the end of the first quarter of next year, which sounds like it's a long way away, but three months isn't really that long. It could even be sooner, frankly. On the other hand, if you need an, a camera right now, uh, then it's a little bit more of a difficult decision because it really comes down to do you care about those extra megapixels? If you do, then the 7, I'm still going to say, is the better pick. I still do prefer the overall build quality of the 7, even though I told you guys that the actual feel in hand and the comfort is pretty much identical. Uh, I just prefer having a metallic build. That's really a matter of personal preference. I know a lot of you out there won't care. Uh, another advantage to this camera, though, is that pancake zoom uh, kit lens out of the box. I wish that the 7 would have been paired with this. Kind of have to scratch my head why Sony didn't pair it with this uh, just at the start. Obviously, they hadn't actually developed it yet, so that's the reason. But really, this would have been the perfect lens uh, to flagship it away with the flagship 7. And that's where I have to say the 6 kind of looks like the new kid on the block when it comes to flagship models, especially since a lower price point is going to lend itself to a higher number of sales. Uh, but if you're really hard pressed, I have to say, like I said before, extra megapixels go with the 7. Uh, no need for them. Want better performance uh, in low light. I, I, better isn't really the comment, but you know, a little bit less noise. It's not terrible. Uh, same rule of thumb applies as with the 5R. 6400 is about the threshold. Uh, anything higher, you're going to be doing quite a bit of post to really clean up the noise on those images. But you'll still find really usable images uh, on this and the 7 and the 5R still going above that 6400 threshold. It's just going to get worse, obviously. But that's still incredibly fast for a camera in this size uh, and with its megapixel count. So I think I've given you guys just about everything you need to know. Battery life, overheating, image quality the quality of this new pancake zoom kit lens. The price I do think is a value. Uh, I do personally still prefer the 7, but as I said before, if I had to start over today, I would be very hard pressed to not justify saving the money and going with this camera, especially since it comes with this new kit lens, which even though it's far from perfect, is certainly better in my opinion than the old 18 to 55, not only in terms of format, but also in terms of overall performance. So really like this camera, have no problem recommending it. Uh, the overheating breakthrough, or I shouldn't say breakthrough, but improvement is another real strong point for it. Uh, all the other things, HDMI out, uh, the ability to charge the battery in body using micro USB. These are all benefits, not bad things, something the 5R also shares. No wall charger with this camera. Something I would like to have still the option of doing. Always good, especially if you still have a spare, but clearly Sony sells external chargers for that. And last but not least, uh, two things I'm going to mention to wrap things up for you guys. Wi-Fi, yes, right now it does seem like a gimmick. But I can assure you guys, as long as this lineup of cameras remains as successful as it has proven to be so far in its 
uh, several year existence, so it's more than several now, uh, I think that this is going to really develop into a very uh, strong application suite of different cutting edge applications you'll be able to leverage your camera with. Especially I'm waiting to see that time lapse app uh, come out. That's another very cool one that Sony's promised we haven't seen yet. But I think Sony is going to show up on this because they have a lot vested here. Because right now the NEX lineup is a cash cow. And for good reason. It's really best in class in just about everything, especially now that overheating is gone. Also, no clicking on any of these cameras. Uh, for those of you in my sample video that hear clicking, this is the clicking. Uh, it is cold here on the East Coast. Uh, even though we've had some 60 degree weather, we're now back to freezing. And so in some of those sample videos, yeah, a little shake starts to happen after two minutes of handheld. And that's what you guys hear since I'm not using a strap right now on any of these review units. So that pretty much covers uh, just about everything you guys need to know, except one final thing. I know I've said this already, hybrid autofocus. Uh, I mentioned before uh, the value of it. I want to just tie that up here at the end because that is what should be the biggest improvement for the new 5R and especially here the 6. And the hybrid autofocus, as I mentioned, is an improvement. But with that said, and I mentioned this earlier in the video, the only time it's really going to shine, in my opinion, is with all the new NEX glass from the new wide angle to the new Prime 35. That's where you're going to see an actual realistic improvement in that hybrid autofocus system. Otherwise, on a day-to-day -day use, uh, I, I personally have not seen uh, enough of an improvement to tell you guys that that is the selling point. Now, in terms of the hybrid autofocus system maturing, software updates, firmware updates, I think they're all there. The ability's there since these cameras have evolved, you know, fr from digital SLRs to uh, you know, we're now borderline uh, computerizing them in terms of having Wi-Fi and applications for them. You know, the, the line is blurring here in terms of what we can do with cameras. So I think things are only going to get better even on these existing models. But I think the real gems will be in the next generation of NEXs. That's not to knock this, knock this current one. But I think you guys see what I'm saying that not only in the Wi-Fi element, but also the hybrid autofocus system, we're going to see the overall system really benefit as things evolve. More new E-mount lenses come out, since a lot more are slated beyond the ones I've mentioned over the course of 2013. So the NEX right now growing into one of the best systems in my opinion. I've always really liked it. You guys know if you follow my channel, big, big fan of what Sony's done with this mirrorless uh, interchangeable lens of uh, cameras or lineup I should say of cameras and the NEX6 is certainly no exception right now best in breed overall especially at its price point the 7 is still a fabulous camera but if you don't care about that tri-nav system want to spend less money want the pancake lens and definitely don't care about the difference in megapixels then there's absolutely no way that I cannot tell you guys that you should run out and pick up one of the NEX6s today. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.